Hey friend, in this video, I'm really excited. I used to paint these things all the time back in the day and I just haven't had time to do it recently. So I'm really excited to dive into a brrr, watercolor misty tree forest. I used to paint these things like three to five years ago all the time, love them. They do require a bit of patience but I'm gonna teach you a really quick and easy way to achieve this. It may look dense, it may look complicated, but even if you're a beginner, you can do this. All you need is good supplies and patience. So let's dive in. Okay, so I'm gonna link below all of the supplies that I use all of the time. They're the same supplies every with everything I do. Sometimes I change up the size of the brush or whatever, but if you wanna check out the exact supplies that I use, make sure you check out those links in the description below. And we are going to be using both wet and wet and wet and dry today. So if you have kind of maybe been confused about when to use wet and wet and wet and dry. This is really gonna clarify that for you. But then also you're gonna be really proud of yourself when you finish this painting um, because it's more detailed. It looks really beautiful because it's a misty forest and you can achieve some really great foggy misty look with some simple wet and wet, wet and wet, <laughs> wet and wet techniques. So to get started, I'm going to lay down a wash with my size 16 brush. The color that I'm gonna mix up is this like smoky blue gray color that I'm going to use Prussian blue and black for. So I have an exact piece just like this in my book, Everyday Watercolor. It's actually a misty rainforest. So there's a bunch of palm tree, what are they called? Yeah. Palm trees. That sounded weird for a second. Bunch of palm trees. Today though, we are going to be painting a misty forest with evergreen trees or pine trees, whatever they are. I grew up in Southern California. I'm not familiar with my winter landscapes details. All right, so I've got this nice black blue color. It's really dark in my mixing well because all of my details are gonna get slightly more and more dark as the painting progresses. So I'm gonna start with my lightest layers first and then I'm gonna get darker as I progress in the painting because the more detailed you want your painting to be with watercolor, um, you need to work from light to dark instead of dark to light. Light, like most other mediums, like oil or acrylic, you work dark to light. Um, but with watercolor, you work light to dark if you're wanting to show more detail, more background and fore foreground and dimension. So to get started, I'm gonna grab this black blue mixture that I have in my mixing well on my size 16 brush, and I'm gonna rinse off the majority of it in my cool cup of water. If this is your first video watching um, on my channel, I use two cups of water when I paint with watercolor so I can separate my cool colors from my warm colors so I don't get brown water. If you want, you can do a clean water cup and a dirty water cup, up to you. I do cool and warm. So I've got a good amount of this color on my brush and I just want a hint of it so that my first layer is super light. We're gonna create this nice dense fog look to our landscape. So swishing it around in my water cup and making sure to get rid of any excess water off my brush by swiping the jar. Not too much because this is gonna be a big wash. So then I'm ready to head to my paper and I've got it landscape and I'm gonna lay down a wash. So I've got this water plus a tiny bit of pigment on my brush mixture. And I'm just going to lay down a really, really light first layer. So if something comes out dark with your first stroke, just get your brush as clean as possible and run over that with some water. And then continue to pull. I'm making sure that this first layer stays really, really wet because we're gonna use wet and wet to show areas where the trees are poking through the fog and the fog color on our paper is going to be mostly water with just a touch of this blue-gray mixture. And so this is the sky peeking out 
above the fog and then the fog is getting really thick and dense through here. And then I'm gonna go back on top of this really wet layer with some of this blue gray color and show where some peaks of trees are peeking through some of the fog. So I'm gonna cover all the way down my paper. I keep going back to my water to grab more of it so that this stays really, really wet. If you want, you can also tape the edges of your paper, all four of them, if you want clean lines, but I kind of like the rough edges of the piece. So now I've gone all the way down the paper and I'm gonna grab more of this color that I mixed up in my mixing well, just a touch of it on the tip of my brush. And now I wanna think about the mountainscape, what it would look like if there was no fog and I could see it clearly, would we have some kind of crisscrossing or just little peaks here and there? So I'm gonna do kind of like a little dance of color blend where I think some trees might pop in here and there. There's no method to this really. I'm just kind of placing this blurry color since the first layer is wet, it will, will be able to use wet and wet like this. And the reason why I'm using wet and wet for this particular layer is to show that the trees, even though some of them are peeking through the fog, it is still a misty day. And so I want it to appear like it's still really foggy and misty. So even though some of the trees are poking through, they're still covered by a little bit of mist, but the areas around them are really dense. And so that blur look behind the trees is gonna make it look misty. So the amount of bursts you have um, is gonna be where you start to layer trees on top of. So keep that in mind. And the trees become really detailed. So if you don't wanna spend hours on this piece, maybe only do a few um, blurry areas. I'm gonna darken some of these spots. And then now at this point, I start kind of painting in these lines, which will become tree trunks. So the mist can kind of wrap all around the tree. Maybe the base of the trunk and the top of a trunk is peeking through, but there's mist going through the middle of a, of a particular tree. So just having fun with this wet and wet stuff, not trying to get too consumed by it and go overboard. Um, because once we start adding trees, that's when it, this piece starts to take shape. So now I've got to wait until this layer dries and we are going to start using wet and dry to bring in our details. So as you can see in this piece that I did a few years ago, we have this blur of turquoise that is wet and wet, but a hard line or wet and dry usage of the tree on top of it, that's a slightly darker hue or value than the hue beneath it um, to show that it's still foggy, but you can slightly see through the fog right there. And then same here, and then obviously these trees in the front. And so the darker the blur is, um, the darker the tree should be, but the lighter the blur is, the lighter the, sh the tree should be. So we really see um, this dense fog look. While this is still wet, I'm just gonna bring down some of these hill or mountain areas um, with a slight tint of color, especially the ones in the foreground. These will be more in the background. I want them to appear closer to me so they have more color than the ones in the background.
All right, so I rarely ever use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process because I usually have a few blocks of paper that I can start one layer on one painting and then move on to another painting um, or check emails or whatever. But if you're in, um, you know, a pinch, you can use a hair dryer. I just put it on the lowest setting. Speed it up. Since I'm on a block of paper, I won't have tons of buckling going on, but if you're painting on a loose sheet, just make sure you've got it taped down to your table or something so it stays relatively flat. Okay, so now I have um, my first layer and I'm ready to move on with my size two brush for all my tiny little tree details. So the lighter the underneath hue is, um, the lighter my tree hue will be. We definitely want it to be like two to three shades darker than the first layer so that it shows up. Um, but for example, in here, I'm gonna have some trees that are just a couple shades darker than this base layer here. But then up here where it's darker, I'm gonna have a couple shades darker for the trees um, to stand out on top of that. So I'm gonna get my size two brush wet. Okay, so I'm gonna start top left and work down because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, start top right and work down so you don't smear. Um, and we're just gonna start with where I know I'm gonna have trees. I might have some trees poking up just the tops of them up here, but I'm not decided yet. So I'm gonna start where I know I'm gonna have trees. In this area here, we're gonna have super, super light ones. So I've got pigment on my brush that I'm gonna release almost completely off of in my water cup and then dry it off with my paper towel and see how light it shows up. It might be too light, but let's go to the paper and find out. So I'm just starting with a really thin trunk line. And then I'm basically just going to turn my brush sideways and give it these kind of back and forth strokes. I'm not, you know, getting all precise with how my tree looks, just kind of pushing it out to the left and to the right of the trunk. I might touch my brush a little bit on my mixing well again to grab more of that color to accentuate that and make it darker. Then the tree here is going to be a little dark right here and right here. And lighter through the middle where the fog comes through. So I like to kind of start basically at a medium level darkness for all spots just in case I wanna layer on top of it later and have a row of trees in front. So even my darker areas where I know the tree is gonna be darker, I still am going about 60%, just in case I wanna add a tree layered on top of it. Another reason why you don't wanna worry about how precise your trees look is because this gets really, really dense. Right now it might look awkward to you and your perfectionist heart might want to sit there and mess with a, a particular branch or something for a long period of time. But once we start adding more of these trees, you really won't even notice those tiny details. So just lay it down and move on. Don't worry about the direction. These branches are pointing too much. You definitely want some that are kind of angled up like this and some that are straight. Um, but just overall think of the shape of an evergreen tree. It's kind of wider at the base and then gets tapered off towards the top of the tree. And then put some in between. So foreground is darker. Once the tree underneath it is dry, I can start putting in some foreground trees so I can really start to see it. The depth of this piece 
take shape. But you can't have depth without all of the values and layers of trees. So you need patience. This piece ain't for sissies. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So you may be thinking to yourself right now, oh my goodness, we're only on the first two to three inches of real estate. Yep. <laughs> Buckle up. It takes time. That's why I haven't done a piece like this in years. Because mama don't have time like this no more. But for you guys, I do. <laughs> what should we talk about? <laughs> hey guys. How's your day going? Some more light guys. Maybe just the tops. Mainly to save on time. But also, this is a dense forest. We're only seeing peaks, peaks into it through the mist. that's rolling in right here. This really white spot on my paper is really dense mist. You won't be able to see that mist though unless you frame it with trees. So put on some good tunes, have some patience, and just lay down these lines. So the moments when I lay down a trunk of a tree and it's too light to see, I just go to my mixing well where the color is that I'm using and just grab a tiny touch. You may at this point catch yourself going cross-eyed. You also may at this point catch yourself with horrible posture. Make sure to roll your shoulders back. Do a couple neck swirls, rolls, whatever you call them. We don't want our posture to be bad. It's fun though, it really is. It's very therapeutic and methodical because you're doing the same thing over and over again. So you can kind of like, you know when you're driving like this, you know, everyone does this, on the freeway or something, and you look up and you're like, holy shnikes, how am I five exits down already? And you're just like daydreaming. You come out of a daydream or something. That's the zone we're in when we do the same thing over and over again, painting wise. So allow yourself to get to that meditative state. Turn on some good tunies. It's good for your brain. Please don't do that when you're driving with our baby. Well, sure. So we've just got this little blur of a base layer that I want the trees to be lighter than the darker ones. We'll maybe have a few darker ones, but not too many. So this is a really dense area of fog because it's bright white. So we just have the tops of trees showing really light ones. Mm -hmm. 
So thick, thick fog coming in hot right here. And I'm just following where I can see the light edge of that fog where it starts to transition to a light gray. So I can show these little treetops peeking over the fog and the rest of the trees would be hidden behind the ear. Grabbing just water on my brush and a little bit of the hue um, to darken this fog behind these trees to make it appear less contrast. I want it to be very subtle. And then just getting lighter as I move up the paper by adding more water. Almost done, guys. All freaking must done. Oh boy. Reward yourself after this, guys. Last little bits, the darkest layer to bring the foreground forward and add even more contrast so the background looks even fainter further away. Making sure these dark bits don't land in the bright white areas. Just darkening the mixture with a little bit more black so that they really come forward. All right. All right, so there you have it. It takes a lot of patience. You can obviously keep going with this piece longer than I have to add more detail more layers of evergreen trees, etc. but it requires a lot of patience, as you saw. I started to go a little crazy there. Um, so I'm satisfied with this piece and the amount of trees that I've added. You can do slightly bigger trees and then go more dense with the amount of layers, depending on how much time you have. So have fun with it. It requires patience. I'm, I've gone crazy, so I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> I need to stand up and take a little stretch break. Please stretch your body, adjust your posture throughout while you're painting this piece, and have fun with it. Um, if you're new to watercolor or you've maybe never endeavored into the realm of more detailed, longer length of time pieces, go easy on yourself. It's your first time doing this. It's not going to turn out perfectly, and that's totally fine. Progress is better than perfection. So have some patience and have fun with it. Turn on some good tunes, all of that. And I'll see you in the next video.